Welcome to Madison City Channel's Know Your Candidate interviews, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'm your interviewer, Shell Gross, and I would like to introduce Dina Nina Martinez Rutherford, running for Alder in District 15. As we begin, I'd like you to give an opening statement about the educational, vocational, and civic experience you have, which qualifies you for this office and why you are running for Alder. Yes, Shell. Well, thank you so much for that. Um, I am running because I believe that the city deserves all voices to be at the table. I am a stand-up comedian by trade, so I like to keep things light, but I also am very passionate about representation. And as a white transgender woman, seeing that there are very limited visit, you know, representation within our city government, um, I want to be at the table. As someone who's under-resourced and been traditionally under-resourced, I believe that what's affordable for highly resourced individuals is not affordable for a lot of us. And so that voice at the table is important to me as well. As far as civil engagement, I run a small business called Lady Laughs Comedy. I have dedicated my uh, career to empowering women and queer people in the comedic arts. And so when I've been, what I've been able to do in the co comedy scene is create a more inclusive um, environment for women and queer people at the table and built a community around that. Thank you. What actions or programs would you support to enhance public safety in Madison? And in particular, what is your position on the use of body cameras by Madison police officers? Um, let's start with body cameras. I, I believe that body cameras are vital to understanding the experiences uh, of interaction with people in uh, interaction with the police in um, public spaces and what we know from that, what we've seen from that is how the disparities with people of color and the police, how they interact and how it can be very dangerous. So having body cams on there shows us what we need to know that we haven't been seeing. And when we know what we need to know, then we're able to address those issues. As far as public safety, I believe that most of it's education. We need to educate our police force and um, uh, first responders about how to interact with uh, people of color, how to interact with trans people so that they are more equipped to serve and protect us. And yeah. What do you see as the most important environmental issues the city needs to address? And what will be your priorities for council action on these issues? Well, definitely clean water and sustainability, making sure that we have clean drinking water so that we're not poisoning ourselves slowly over our lifetime is very important. I believe that we need to include more urban agriculture within our cityscape and finding ways uh, to build community and give responsibility to the neighborhoods to uh, care for those items. Uh, I believe that we should incentivize the use of solar panels for power and yeah, just try to find ways to conserve and incentivize people that are making meaningful changes within their homes, their city and the world around them. Thank you. What is your position on increasing the pay for alders? I believe that it's important that we serve, that we pay our elected officials a wage that will give them full energy tanks when they approach the job. One of the things that I've noticed, even though, um, it, well, as someone who's under-resourced, um, having a salary that helps me dedicate my time to communi uh, communicating with the community and interacting and doing the job that government is supposed to do is important. And I believe that alder pay would help us have more dedication to 
what we do and not pull resources from our families and our friends and, and our personal time. I believe that when we value those who are serving us, then they tend to value us more. And alder pay would help mitigate some of the barriers to entering government. Um, it's very expensive and time consuming to run a campaign. It's very expensive and time consuming to do the job of government. And when we have to split our resources, our attention and our energy, that's an impediment to building better democracy and having more diverse voices at the table. What, if anything, do you think the city should be doing to support economic development? Oh, well, as someone who's a small business owner, um, who the, my business was decimated by the pandemic. I was able to get some resources, but it still has never fully recovered, which I fully understand and accept. But I do believe that government has a responsibility to the small business owners, especially the small business owners who are struggling every day, spending most of their time building a business which also takes time away from their families and the things that they have to do on a daily basis. So if we are able to uh, meet small businesses, especially when they're struggling and have emergency funds set aside to assist with um, that, it would be very beneficial to all of us because who doesn't love going to a bar and having a drink? Who doesn't love going to a restaurant and sharing a meal with people in your community? And that's where I see that economic development could use some help and also incentivizing people to start new businesses that that we need within our districts and within our city. How do you see racial disparities impacting constituents in your district? And are there any actions the city should take to address those? Well, I think I see it constantly. I love Madison and I see that there are kind of silos that we put people into and I and and I feel like that's not just a Madison issue that's a that's a national uh, you know cities around the country are experiencing the same thing but when we include diverse or voice more diverse voices we are able to come up with solutions that we would have never come up with prior to having the introduction of diverse voices um, watching those disparities, people not having the ability to get jobs that they deserve and are qualified for, people that are not able to afford housing because they are, gosh, we're putting everything on credit cards right now. You know, like our needs are not being fully met without, you know, help. So the disparities are hard people of color, transgender people, queer people, we face a little bit more um, struggle in just getting our basic needs met, especially when we're not offered those uh, the same footing. So I believe that it's important that we put people in to places of leadership with those voices. That's, I believe it's important that we include everybody, give people a hand up, you know, invest in our, in diverse or more, di more diverse populations and um, really sow into them so that they have ownership within their communities. What are the most critical issues that you see facing the people in your district and what would you propose to address these? Similarly, affordability and housing, uh, we, absolutely need more housing. We absolutely absolutely need to do it more responsibly and affordably. Like I said, I you know, I'm under resourced. I understand what it's like to eat rice for a month, you know, because I can't afford anything else. We need housing that we can pay for, that we can also care for our families in, that we can feel safe in, that we can access um access transportation to get to our jobs so that we can pay for those things. I am passionate about that, finding ways to work with uh, smaller developers and nonprofit developers to create actually 
sustainable and affordable solutions would be one of my priorities. And then we all know that mental health crisis is going just off the charts. So expanding the CARES program that has uh, first responders who are not uniformed and are, who are trained in caring for people during mental health crises, uh, crises is very important. What would you like to say to the viewing audience as we complete this interview? I have tons of jokes I want to say right now, but I, <laughs> um, I am excited to be running for office. I am, this is new to me and I'm really enjoying, really digging into my community. And as someone who is under-resourced and underrepresented in government, I feel like it's my time to lend my voice and the way I think to create solutions and to show transgender children and queer kids in our communities that they too can participate in government and that they don't have to um, adhere to uh, societal standards of, of you know, adapting to pretend not to be queer. And, and as somebody who has often longed to see me in city government, my voice in city government, I feel like it's important and valuable, and I'm really excited to, to represent the people in my community and, and their children. I wanna thank Dean and Nina for speaking with us and the viewing audience for taking the time to know your candidates. I want to remind everyone that primary election day is Tuesday, February 21st, and the general election is Tuesday, April 4th. As with every election, please vote. On behalf of Madison's City Channel and the League of Women Voters of Dane County, thank you for joining us.